Thursday, this kid, the sixth grader, he takes off his sweater, right? He's hot. It, my room is like, either it's warm or it's normal. So it was warm. So he was getting hot and he's like, I'm gonna take off my hoodie. So he takes off his hoodie and I guess his shirt underneath is like, you know, a white t-shirt. It pulls up, right? And the way he's taking it off is he's pulling it, he's bending over and he's pulling it over his head, right? Like a normal boy, right? <laughs> and this girl in the back who's playing the drum, she's there that day. She happens to be there that day. And she sees part of his butt, like part of his butt crack, right? At the top. So she goes into hysterics, like just hysterics. It's so crazy. She was like stomping and moving back and forth. I mean, her hair was just bouncing all over the place and she was laughing like hysterically, you guys, to the point where it was like, what the fuck is wrong with her? Like, what's what's this about? And I didn't understand what happened. I'm like trying to run through this music and she won't stop. She just keeps going. The whole class just gets like, oh my God, what's wrong with her? And they start laughing at her. And she's like, I saw his butt dimples and all this other shit. I saw his butt dimples. And that's all I heard, right? So I'm like, okay, can we move on? And apparently one of the clarinets saw the front of him, right? His nipples. I mean, to these kids, it's just like, ah, like, so they get so out of control. I'm like, okay, can we stop now? All right. Okay. It's over. Move on. They won't move on. They won't shut up. They're just going on. I said, hey, I asked you guys to be quiet. We have a lot of work to do. We have a lot of work to do. We don't have time for this. No, they won't shut up. They won't shut up. And I said, you know, I'm going to just start calling parents. And this girl's like, oh, my mom ain't going to give a shit. You know, I said, you know, I don't want, I don't want to hear about your mom. I said, I don't want to hear about anybody's parents right now. I said, I needed to get quiet here and I need to get, we need to get to work. Because these kids don't fucking practice. So it's like I have to constantly make them practice in front of me. And so this girl's, you know, acting like a nut behind the the drum kit and everybody's in hysterics and I'm just like you know what enough I've had enough you know what I don't I'm t I'm sick and tired of this and you know what to be honest with you guys you know what I don't want to sound like shit I don't want to sound like shit during concert day I mean I was so pissed you guys that it just that's what it brought out it was like I don't want to sound like shit and we are gonna sound like shit if we don't continue working on our music like, it's just ridiculous. Yeah, nice. I know. I shouldn't have said that, but it was just like I had enough. And then they finally, like, got a little quieter. A little bit. That didn't even really do much. I said, but you know what? I'm not going to be embarrassed. I'm not going to be embarrassed. Because you know what? If it comes to it, and you guys sound like crap, you can go up there by yourselves. You can go up there with the sub, because I'll call out. I won't be here. I'm not gonna embarrass myself. I mean, this is my career, and I don't want to go up there with a band that sounds like crap. Not. All of my bands that I've ever taught have always practiced. They've gotten it together. Yeah, I've had to push them, but eventually, they get it done. You guys are not getting it done. And we got a lot of work to do. So I gave him a talking to and I was pissed. And, you know, then they started telling me how this girl in the back is always on her phone. She's always got her earbuds in. Airbuds, earbuds, whatever. They're like, oh, they're fake, miss. They're not airbuds. They're, they're earbuds. But they're fake. She wants them to look like airbuds or whatever. I'm like, I don't really care about that, okay? I don't care. You know? Um, what I care about is people not being on their phone. So, you know, 
I told him she gets bored right there because I'm not always working with her the whole time because I have so much work to do with my clarinets and my saxophones and my trumpets and my trombones you know what I mean like I don't have time I mean she's the less she's the least of my worries right now because you guys can barely get through parts of this music so Apparently, you know, I don't mind her reading a book back there or whatever, but when she doesn't know, because I checked and I said, can you play this for me? And she could kind of play it, but it was not really there. So I said, well, you know, um, I don't want you listening to air, uh, your earbuds. I don't want you on your phone. That's what I'm hearing. She's like, I'm not. So she pulls her hair back. And mind you guys, I'm sitting a ways, right? She's in the back, I'm in the front of the class. And I'm like, and I look, and she pulls her hair back, and I'm like, well, I don't see anything. So they're like, of course you don't, because she pulled them out, and she pulled her hair back, and then she pulled her hair back forward and put them in. And I was like, that was, that was after. Like, you know, they weren't saying this in front of her. So they won't do that because then that's going to start a fight so it's like no um, but miss you know she has them, she has them and that's what she's doing and da, da, da. so so then the next day Friday she doesn't come in the morning she doesn't come during six period she's talking to her counselor oh it's therapy time now it's therapy time again and I'm just like uh, so they're telling me all this stuff they're like well, what happened was you know when this kid took off his sweater and I said, yeah, I, I understand, okay? I go, but I don't want, it, I don't want this happening anymore. Like, I don't want to, I don't want to have you guys get so out of control that we can't get our work done. We need to be able to work, get our stuff done. We have to. You have to know how to practice this. Otherwise, it's not going to work. You're going to go home and you're not going to play it right. You're going to not practice it right. When you do practice. Oh, look how pretty it is, you guys. Look at all those surfers. Damn. So, anyway. Yeah, I'm having issues with that. And I was just waiting. Because I thought, you know what? I bet you anything she's in there going, Miss yelled at us. And she got mad at us. And she used the word shit. I could just hear it. But you know what? I'm sick and tired of this shit, man. It's like, they got me to a point where it's like, and I I know I shouldn't let kids get under my skin like that, but it's like, I'm so like, trying to get shit done. I don't have an assistant. I have all this work. And the other thing that really angers me is that that damn plant manager he still has not put in my new cabinets that they built. Okay, I give him credit. He actually did that. He had two people come in from, I don't know, where they're from in the district. But they build shit, right? But they only build LAUSD shit. But in this case, he knew one of them and he was like, can you just do me the favor? And he's like, yeah. He goes, then we won't charge you. Because they, they charge if it's not LAUSD cabinets. And he's like, okay, cool. So he came in, okay, and he came in with a friend, with another worker. And they got those cabinets built, right? Well, I did, the, me and, and my assistant did the first one. All they had to do was put in the doors. And then they did the second one, right? So they're like, okay, well, we need to bolt them in to the wall. It's just a safety hazard thing, right? So they have to do. So, okay, so when are they going to come in and do it? And he's like, I don't know. Um, I'm going to try to get them this week and, you know, we'll see. Da, da, da. The last time he told me that was about three weeks ago. And my music is a mess. I, everything is, like, I got it organized. But it's a mess because it has to be outside these cabinets and I have them on my cart. So they're all like, and they look organized and everything, but they're not in a drawer where I need them. And so 
I have other stuff that needs to go into these drawers too, like things that I use for the music awards, like tablecloths and things, just all kinds of stuff, you know, old um, metals, metals from the past I still have that I can use, they're the same ones we use, but um, just like all this stuff is like sitting on that cart and I need to get it organized in these cabinets and he just is lagging. I'm just like, dude, come on. And I told him the last time I talked to him, I said, you know, this is really frustrating. It's really frustrating because I need my cabinets. I need my music in my cabinets and all this other stuff. And it's just hanging out. And he's like, I understand, but you know, there's only so much I can do and do the little and I'll try to see what what we can do. I mean, it's like what am I gonna wait till after the summer to have this happen and, and wait even after that? I mean I could see that fucking happening, you know? I really can see that happen. I really can. I can see that happening. I can see, oh, it's just too busy because it's towards the end of the year now and we can't do it, so we'll have it done during the summer. And then I come back after summer and it's still sitting there. Because things that like that have happened before. So because all my shit sitting out there, like I have things that I have like cut out letters and things that I've used for the board on the outside, you know, to fancy up our music board outside our class and things like that. I've had like all this stuff. I have all this stuff, right? So my fourth period comes in and one of those eighth grade boys, he loves to sit in front of my desk. He just wants to sit there. He thinks that's the best place for him because he can get his work done. And I'm like, okay, well, when I see, you know, if you're getting your work done, then you could stay there. That's okay. But I need you to make sure you're getting your work done. And he's been okay until this last time. This last week, he decided to get on my desk and get, not on top, <laughs> he decided to take my stickies, my small stickies off my desk, and he put them all on the side of the brand new cabinet. It's in front of my desk, waiting to be put into, bolted into the wall, right? I was at the front, and I can't see, I can't, I couldn't see what he was doing. I knew he had a guitar in his hand and I knew he wasn't talking or doing anything like that because he's away from his friends. But apparently he did that. And then when they were leaving, my cart was by the door, semi covered. And it had like all this, um, all these, le you know, all this stuff that's supposed to be in the cabinets, all these cut out letters, right? And so, they're all bunched up by the door and I said, hey, you know, you guys need to back away from the door and then the bell rang. And then those boys decided, oh, let's just throw her shit. They picked up all those letters and threw them up in the air and ran out. So I caught, I caught a few boys and I said, hey, I go, you know what? Um, you didn't need to pick this up. And they're like, well, I didn't do it. And I said, I said, well, then who did it? Because you guys are all standing together. And then they're like it was the kid with the with the blue backpack and I know who he's talking about so I was like okay and then they're like well, we'll pick it up so they picked up all this shit I mean it's lunchtime you guys it's like I want to have my lunch and all my lunchtime right they want to have their lunch and they're picking up this shit and I'm just like I'm so pissed and so the next day I said, you know what, since we um, had to act like animals when we left and act crazy and throw my stuff, my things around like that, I said, you guys will be the last to leave and everybody in here is going to be dismissed by me. And I will be checking your guitar too to make sure it's still in tune. Oh, they hated that. They did not like that. And I said, and you will no longer be sitting next to my desk because you put those post-its up there and he's like, I don't even know what you're talking about. I'm like, yes, of course you do. And he's like, hey, I don't know. I don't know what you're talking about. So, <laughs> dismissing them one by one. And of course, all five of those boys were the very last to leave. And I said, oh, let me see your guitar. Let me hear it. Oh, it's still in tune. Well, what do you know? It's still in tune. Yeah, they had, I had to do that. But this, because we had a long Friday, they had to actually go to their fifth period after that. 
So I was like, oh. They're like, but we're going to be late to fifth period if we have to do all this if we're the last to leave. And we have to get our guitars checked and all. So and I said, but that's your problem, not mine. Because I am not. I will not give you a pass. And they're like, eh. Yeah, they didn't like that. They didn't like that at all. But that serves them right, you guys. Because they will think twice when they decide to throw things up in the air that belong to me. And they all, of course, of course, they all blamed it on this sixth grader who tells me basically everything. He's a tattletale, for sure. And they're like, no, it was him. He said, he he's the one that did it. And I said, no, it wasn't him. And all these boys are like, yeah, it was. It was him. And I'm like, no, it wasn't. No, it wasn't. I said, you guys just say that because he's not here to defend himself. And, and because he tells me. That's why you're saying this. He's not here to defend himself. And he tells me the truth. And they're like, mm, no, I don't think so. And I said, yeah, I do. I do think so. By the way, the kid that they're talking about is a sixth grader. He is a big tattletaler, you guys. <laughs> he is. Um, but he owns an MP3 player. He showed it to me one time. I was like, what is that? And he's like, it's an MP3 player. And I was like, oh, really? I go, let me see that. I go, wow, this is really old school. And he's like, yeah. Like, where did you get it? And he goes, from my brother, my older brother. I said, oh, I said, that's nice. And I go, does it still work? And he goes, yeah. Because I have all this music in there. And all this music is from like, you know, 2000, early 2000s, you know. Um, but yeah, she is quite the snitch. Oh, well. That's okay. I could live with that. Those boys can't stand it, though. They're like, eh. Uh-huh. Yeah. I got an extra pair of eyes, you guys. Mm-hmm. That's right. That is right. Oh, it's a beautiful day, you guys. It really is. It's gorgeous. I know it's overcast and all, but this is like perfect riding weather. Let's see. Where are we going? We're not going to the Newport Boulevard Peninsula. Peninsula. Uh, we're going to stay on Coast Highway. That's kind of like a little area. Like Balbo, uh, Fashion Island, that kind of thing. But we're going to get, we're going to keep taking this. Um, we can also take the 55 to Newport. Could also do that. But uh, I think I could keep taking this up. I think I can. Let's get the boats, you guys. The boats. Yeah, see, when I slow down and I um, come to a stop, it gets pretty hot in this jacket. I probably should have taken the liner out. I didn't think about that. I kind of thought, like, oh, it's going to be cool out there. But it's actually pretty... It's not really cold. It's just nice. It's, it's not muggy either. It just feels perfect. Feels perfect. But yeah, I'm kind of hot in this. Um, to be honest. Let's see if I can... Did I just undo that? Yes, I did. Let's see if I can undo this one. And I did. We'll see if that helps a little bit. And then there's... Where's the other ones? I thought there were some in the front. Maybe not. I'm still getting to know my jacket. The part that goes around your your neck also kind of it has a latch to hold on to it. Just keep it back in case you don't want that around your neck. Bell, uh, Newport Marina. Hmm. Look at how pretty it is. The water. Must be nice to be like right there to have your home right there in front of the sound and then the bay right there and take your little boat out or your large boat go into the ocean or around the harbor I had a friend that lived out here her dad was a chemical engineer something like that I don't know he owned um, some of these power plants that was her stepdad her real dad was like more her real dad her actual father biological father was a musician and kind of like he loved music 
and but he had like some problems with alcohol and stuff so she didn't really grow up with him my friend Stacy and um, but she always like like she just thought he was awesome and um, I'm sure he was so yeah her dad uh, her stepdad dick he uh, owned uh, this couple power plants anyway they um, when we we're in college she <laughs> she was like oh my dad's gonna have this is like when I was just out of high school my dad my mom and dad are gonna have this Christmas party they have every year it's like an open house Christmas party like they have the whole area like where they live the neighborhood they just like open their homes and everybody kind of goes around well look at you wow look at you they have like all this like open open homes right so you can just go to each house and chat and have hors d'oeuvres or whatever so they live in this exclusive place where it's like all like gated in and these huge like mansion homes right <laughs> Stacy was so different than her family because, I mean, her sister owned, like, a, a tanning bed. I mean, owned a tanning bed, you guys. <laughs> Stacy was never like that. She rode, like, a... She drove a, um... El Camino with flames on the side, you know. So, she had, like, bangs that were, like, bat wings and stuff. And Anyway, she's like, do you want to come? And I was like, okay. So... I go in there, I go to her house, right, and then she's like, oh, so she's introducing me to her parents and stuff, and I'm like, hi, and they're like, oh, you know, um, help yourself, you know, and this and this and that, and these people were like, I mean, when you're a kid, it's like, they're so, seem so old, you know, it's like, oh, and you're having champagne and like all this stuff, and it's just like, oh not used to that right but anyway the mother's like look she's like the anheuser-busch carriage is here to take us to around and she's like come on we all got on <laughs> we all got on the carriage oh my god you guys it was funny it was funny where am i i'm still going down the coast highway yeah it was this huge i mean it was the anheuser-busch horses with the carriage on the back and they were taking us around to the different homes and look at that car you guys for real 63 i think that's what it said uh, but yeah it was it was funny <laughs> me and stacy kids hanging out with some old folk folks and uh riding on the back of the anheuser-busch carriage with the Anheuser-Busch horses. <laughs> Say that 10 times fast. Yeah, so <laughs> it's been a while since I've been out here. But yeah, I've spent some time out here in, not here, but in Laguna Beach area, in Lake Forest. It's a beautiful day for a walk, I'll tell you that. I'm surprised more people aren't out here. They're all in their cars. Everybody's walking around. The wedding dresses, you guys. Look at that. I like how you guys get in my way. Yeah, thanks. Thanks a lot. God forbid I hit any one of these cars. I'll be in trouble. They're probably all lawyers. Oh, hello there. Yeah, I like your bike, man. Okay. I think I'll sit here. It's fine. It's fine. Oh, an Arizona plate. Look at that. Look at that. Look at the dog. There's a dog. Oh, look at his little head. Move it, peoples. Yeah, what's up, man? I should have took the box off the bag. My zipper's all messed up on my pet palace. Not my pet palace, but Rusty's pet palace. It's all messed up. So, I have to figure out how to get that fixed. Calm down, asshole. Wow. Idiot. Wow, you're amazing. So are you. 
amazing how they're not getting very far. Look at the beautiful ocean, you guys. Look at that. Look at that. We're heading towards uh, Crystal Cove, which is really, really pretty. Yeah, right here. Right here, in fact. I took some pictures of my niece. They have a great uh, hiking trail, by the way. Um, I took some pictures of my niece here that she needed for, uh, I think what her, I think a website or something. They came out awesome, you guys. Yeah, really nice. Now watch how I pass up these dummies. <laughs> watch how I pass up the dummies. Look at this dumb, dummy number one, dummy number two. <laughs> yeah, I still gotta get some risers, you guys. Uh, I need my handlebars up higher, like back and higher, so I'm sitting up straighter. This is not doing wonders for my back. It's not doing wonders for my back. You know, one thing I really miss, you guys, I miss kayaking. I did some kayaking in La Jolla. Oh my gosh, it was amazing. Amazing. So beautiful. Look at this. Just imagine being kayaking out there like that. Just, oh, so fun. So nice. That was an awesome trip. Um, we were supposed to go through the caves, but it was too high water. Like, we couldn't get in there, but we were able to um, go in and see dolphins. It was just so beautiful. I love the ocean. I love seeing stuff like that. Like, I went up to, where was it? Santa Barbara area. Pulled over, you know, to overlook the ocean. And I saw a whale, you guys, but it was from far away. But I could see its, uh, its spout and everything. It was so cool. I was like, oh my gosh. And I actually got a picture of it. But you can only see the water coming out, you know. Yeah, you guys, I think I need to find, I need to find another gig. I really do. I need to find something different. I don't know what that's going to look like, but I'm really tired of this attitude with these kids. And this school in particular is just... It's surprising. I guess it's eye-opening for me because I've, I've always kind of been an itinerant teacher. So I've I've gone to from location to location in elementary. So I didn't really spend that much time with a principal, with one principal. I dealt with three different ones, but on a daily, like a you know, two days a week, one day a week, some stuff like that. So. I wasn't like always there and dealing with um, you know the staff and things like that so um, this first I don't know six years were not too bad I mean I had some problems in the very beginning with this position but it wasn't like like this it was it was there were things that I felt needed to be addressed and eventually were addressed and got taken care of. But this, uh, you know, this whole thing with putting my schedule together is, it's a little worrisome. Like, I don't, I don't know. It's, I'm worried that next year is going to be really, really bad. Like, they're not going to give a shit. They're just going to be like, oh, I'm just going to, we're just going to throw two curriculums in here, three cur curriculums over there. And what she can do about it, you know? It's like, they're going to just find places for these kids to be. And to be out of other people's hair, I guess. Or not be such a problem. They're going to make me into a babysitter, basically. And, um, yeah, it's just not good. Here's Laguna Beach. Then I'm hearing, like... I'm hearing, like, this next generation that's coming up is, is like really 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 bad oh look at this look all these wonderful people out here out here enjoying the beach 
Yeah, I'm hearing that they are way, like, disrespectful. They tell teachers to shut the fuck up, that kind of thing. Yeah, it's... It doesn't sound good. The alpha generation, they're calling it. Um, Nothing to do with, you know, COVID. Just the fact that they're just, you know, they've been... They've uh, grown up on iPads and laptops and shit and phones. And that's just... They have no respect for people with, you know, certainly without, with the teaching credential in music. They don't care about me. <laughs> they don't give a shit about me or anybody else with a credential for that matter. So it doesn't sound good. It sounds really bad. And I don't want to be a part of that. I don't want to have to deal with that because that's going to just... It's going to be bad. And then feeling like completely disrespected by my principal and the counselors and putting these schedules together that basically screw me over, you know. Um, Because they are... They've already pissed me off a lot. And these counselors, like I said, they're nice people. Well, to an extent. Okay, I mean... I'd say two of them are are nice. The other one is I don't know what her fucking problem is. Maybe she hates her job too. I don't know because I'm starting to really hate my job. And she's a new counselor too. She's a new counselor, so it seems like wow, you're already you know having issues with this. You just started. Um, I don't know. It just doesn't look good for next year so I'm looking around I'm looking around and I'm trying to see what's out there and you know I don't really want to go into subbing um subbing I guess it would be okay but it's you know you're dealing with kids that aren't baby it's basically babysitting you're babysitting because those kids are not gonna I've subbed before I subbed for like three months or two months somewhere around there before I got my a permanent position it's not you know I would never sub for a charter school just like a charter school at all ever 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 I will never um, not even ones that have a good reputation I would not sub for um, I did that and it was really awful it was horrible You know, nobody wants to do anything, but that's not even it. It's just the kids are incredibly disrespectful because they know that they can get away with shit. Um, They get away with things all the time. Uh, Principal wasn't even there half the time when I was subbing. And they're just, they don't know how to handle things. It's so weird. It's like we have certain things that we are expected to do. They're just, you know, whatever the principal wants is what goes. It's They have no accountability. So it's, I mean, I don't know about every school, uh, charter school, but it seems like they just don't have that accountability with the administrators and it, get, get, it could get really ugly. And I've experienced that. I've seen it. I've seen it. Um, you know, even when I, there was one time I was with a class and... It was so bad, and this was actually in a bad area. It was, it was in a bad area. It was like in, kind of like, almost like Watts area. And these kids were not, I couldn't even take, I couldn't even take roll. Let's put it that way. I couldn't take roll. None of them would sit down. They got into the teacher's desk and pulled out scissors and were grabbing a bunch of paper and just cutting it up and throwing it everywhere. I mean, this is what I walked into, you guys. And I had to call the front office and tell them, I need security here. Like, these kids have scissors in their hands. They're cutting up paper. They're doing this, they're doing that. And they're like, well, we'll send somebody there as soon as we can. I'm like, as soon as you can. I go, these kids are not, like, they're not backing down here. Like, I've already told them to sit down or else I'll mark them all absent. They don't care. They're not caring. They're still doing this. And they're screaming and they're yelling and just didn't, this whole thing, right? It was bad. And, uh, ouch. I was trying to avoid that. They ended up bringing this 
woman in who's like six feet tall. She was like six feet tall, Italian woman. She came in and she was just like, give me that and this and that. And she, I mean, she strained him out. Like they got quiet kind of when she came in. And then 